Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace. This is episode 5 in our series about alcohol. It's the last episode of this series. We've talked about how alcohol came to be. We've talked about how we evolved to process it. We've even talked about how we process it in weird ways, like through prohibition and through, like, consuming alcohol through our eyeballs and things. Like, all sorts of stuff in this series. So make sure you watch all four of those episodes. But today we're going to talk about the consequences that many people face when they drink alcohol. And that is hangovers. Everyone has a different tolerance level when it comes to hangovers. Men's are usually higher than women's, sorry ladies, but that has to do with how our bodies work and the, you know, our bodies are slightly larger than women's bodies on average. But anyone who drinks a little too much, regardless of your physical makeup, can be exposed to a ton of discomfort. We're talking headaches, nausea, fatigue, anxiety, trembling, diarrhea, it's pretty miserable, or so I've heard. I actually, my weird superpower is I don't get hangovers that often. It's happened a couple times in my life, but this doesn't happen to me that much, so I don't, I don't really know. I'm talking about this from a purely academic sense. But the causes of a hangover are pretty interesting. A lot of this comes from being dehydrated. You know, urination increases once you've, quote, broken the seal, even though that's not a thing. That's not a thing. There's no such thing as breaking the seal. When you drink alcohol, it makes your way into your bloodstream and it tells your pituitary gland not to produce vasopressin. It's a hormone that typically keeps your body lubed up with moisture. Without the vasopressin, liquids that are consumed, like you do when you drink, go right to the bladder, which is why you urinate so often while you're drinking. So they don't get processed in the same way. And when they don't get processed in that way, you will become dehydrated. The immune system also responds to alcohol consumption by inflaming. There's this poison in my body. Oh my gosh, I have to do something about it, which can affect your appetite, your concentration, and your memory. And it also makes you feel a little puffy or bloated. There's also stomach irritation, which can happen, which is where it slows down the rate at which the stomach empties itself, also causing you to feel kind of full and can lead to nausea, vomiting, or stomach aches. There's a drop in blood sugar, which is uh, which can result in shakiness, and moodiness, tiredness, and just general weakness kind of across the board. And if it gets really low, it can cause seizures. But blood sugar levels also will just drop steeply as you're drinking. There's dilation of blood vessels, which we were talking about earlier, which is, uh, you know, basically this vasodilation causes flushing and headaches. It can cause all sorts of stuff. There's sleep quality interruption. You might think, oh, I sleep better when I've had a few drinks, but you actually aren't sleeping better. You're just sleeping kind of harder. Your body doesn't get to do the normal sleep cycle the way it would, and you can wake up kind of feel kind of tired and sleepy. There's also congeners. Congeners are substances that are produced during fermentation and are responsible for most of the taste and aroma of alcohol, like you know why whiskey and gin taste and smell the way they do. And they can contribute to the symptoms of a hangover, not the drunkenness necessarily, but the hangover. There are usually esters and aldehydes, but there's no way to cure this thing. This is a whole bunch of different stuff that comes together to give what we call a hangover. So eating bread or you know, bacon is not gonna cure all of this stuff. Bacon doesn't lo lower, like, like make your blood vessels constrict and make your stomach empty better and stop things being sent to the bladder when they're not supposed to. Like, that, that bacon's great, but it's not that great. There's actually no hangover cure that, that has been proven to work by science. The National Health Service in the UK says there is no treatment for a hangover. The best way to avoid a hangover, as they say, is to either, one, not drink, <laughs> or two, drink sensibly and within the recommended limits. Sounds very National Health Service. Thank you, Britons. Uh, according to Medical News Today, hangovers have to run their course. They just have to be waited out. And that can be best done by resting, drinking plenty of water to treat the symptoms, you know, the dehydration symptoms, and also painkillers, potentially. If you have a headache, you can treat that symptom as well. But you can't fix the hangover as a whole. The hair of the dog is a kind of mythical cure, but you shouldn't believe that. That doesn't make you no longer hungover. It just makes you feel better about the hangover that you have. But when you drink alcohol and you already are feeling the effects of the alcohol you drank yesterday, it might just make your hangover more severe in the long run. So the hair of the dog doesn't have any scientific basis whatsoever either. In the end, people are going to drink. We know this, we talked about it earlier. People drink for a variety of different reasons, though. I mean, there are people who don't drink. 
more power to y'all. It's great. There's nothing wrong with being a person who drinks or being a teetotaler. It's no big deal. But for most people and for many people, drinking is a social activity. You know, they call it a social lubricant. They call it liquid courage. They have a cultural or ceremonial tradition connected to alcohol. Alcohol is ingrained in much of our culture. For example, many countries believe that if you don't look each other straight in the eyes during a clinking of the glass, you could be punished with you know, bad sex or bad luck or you know something for years. In many countries, you're not supposed to pour your own drink. And instead, everyone should just monitor their friends and make sure everybody's topped off. And in Japan, for example, that is a gesture of companionship and demonstrates the respect for one's drinking buddies. In China, elders hold their drinks a little higher than the rest of the group. In Russia, the older generation is known to take a shot of vodka to kick off a business meeting. And of course, here in America, drinks are connected to all sorts of things from, you know, brunch, but also to like open bars at weddings, bar mitzvahs, eggnogs on Christmas, champagnes on New Year's, you know, all sorts of things. Alcohol is sort of part of these cultural experiences, and they have been for a long, long time. There's even like modern stuff, like bringing alcohol to a house party and then, you know, leaving it behind. That's the polite thing to do. You know, you don't show up empty handed. We've been doing this forever and we're going to keep doing it. Whether people feel strongly about alcohol in the positive or the negative is great. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. But even when people compare alcohol and other things, alcohol has been part of a human society for so long that it's hard to say we can just get rid of it. We can't just brush it aside. But that being said, we should also look at it critically, just like we would anything else in human society. Drinking responsibly is a slogan that you hear a lot, but it's also important. We should be thinking more about why we're drinking, how we're drinking. My mom always said, don't just drink to get drunk. You know, you should go maybe drink with your friend to have a drink with your friend, but don't go out to get blacked out. That's not healthy. Again, you do you, but that's my mom. I gotta you know, listen to my mom. But like I said, in the end, we're all gonna do this, or most of us are gonna do this. And we're gonna do it all over the world, and maybe we're gonna take it to space and go to another world with this stuff too. And that's gonna bring a whole new set of challenges, which is pretty cool too. I hope you guys feel like you understand alcohol a little more and why we have it today and where it came from. Let me know down in the comments if I missed anything or if you have any other questions. You can also come find me on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez. If you didn't watch the first four episodes of this series, make sure you do that now and subscribe for more Test Tube Plus so that you can get more of us every single day of the week. Check out last week's episodes on black holes, but make sure you buckle up for some science because that's some heavy stuff. That's a black hole pun, by the way. Also, big thanks to Natalia Reagan for coming in earlier in the week. It was so awesome to have her here. She's super smart. Reminder, check her out on YouTube, Natalia 13 Reagan, also on Twitter under the same name. She's great make sure you check her out. And thanks again for watching Test Tube Plus. I'm Trace. I will see you tomorrow. If you want to listen to all of our episodes, you can check us out on iTunes as well and shoot us a rating while you're at it. Thanks.